This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, so hopefully you did go through and work that question by yourself, and hopefully you were pleasantly surprised with, with how you did. Okay, uh, it's exam style, not exam standard. Okay, that, that that's the key bit that I would say. So what we've got, uh, let's follow the approach. So there's the approach. Let's go with it. Uh, read the requirement, noting the year end dates uh, and allocate the timings. So there we go. Prepare the statements of cash flows uh, for the year ended 31st of October 20x7. OK, for this company, Geofrost. Uh, usual information. Uh, you've got the, uh, the statement of profit or loss. Uh, you've then got the statement of financial position. You can see there that we're going from right to left. So you've got the brought forward balances on the right, carry forward balances on the left. OK, uh, and then what you've also got as well is some additional information. OK, well, you can see there we have some depreciation and it tells us also about some uh, disposal of some assets. OK, uh, so what we need to go through and do uh, is we need to go through and get our pro forma set up. So we've got there, is it our statement of cash flows? I've got, is it my operating activities? Where we will start shortly with PBT. So I'll put that at the top of a blank page of A4 paper. Uh, once you've got that there, turn the page of paper over. You then need, is it at the top, your investing activities. Uh, leave yourself half a page of paper. And you then have, is it your financing activities and then right at the very bottom the last three lines of the page you've got your movements the brought forward and the carry forward figure okay there we go and then don't forget you need a separate page of paper with the workings okay excellent there we go so uh that's the first bit uh we've done part one done part two uh or step one step two uh step three is to go through there and look at the, the cash balance and the overdraft balance so you can see that we've got a cash balance of 1063 and 2045 quick look down there's a bank overdraft balance, is it there, of 1230 and 429. Okay. Uh, there are no cash equivalents here. So within my workings, you, you can do it in bracketed workings. It, it's up to you. Uh, but what you've got there, I think it's just a bit safer. Just draw it up. As a small table okay so i've then got is it my cash balance and my overdraft as well uh, so the cash balance let's get this correct is it 2045 this year and last year was 10 six three this year's overdraft is one two thirty last year's it was four two nine uh, if i net those figures off uh two oh four five less one two three oh is eight one five the opening balance was six three four so the movement that we have there 
from the brought forward to the carry forward there is an increase in cash is it of 181 okay there we go uh so i can slot that in the movement is 181 brought forward 634 and carry forward is it there 815 there we go Not, nothing to it is there okay excellent so if i'm going through that going back to the approach we've read the requirement we've set the pro forma we've done the cash and cash equivalent it's now all about the statement of profit or loss isn't it okay so i start here i start that profit before tax and that profit before tax is there at fifteen thousand. so pbt fifteen thousand. once i've started at pbt i then look up to see my finance costs and the investment income uh, finance cost is 400 so that would need to be added back on and then my investment income you can see there's 180 so that increased my profits before tax but we need to get back to operating profit so we need to deduct it, don't we? Okay, there we go. And again, what I can do is I can then tick off the balances as I have dealt with them, because ideally you should deal with all of those balances in the year. Okay. Uh, the next step is to go through there, isn't it? We've we've looked up from PBT. Uh, we then need to go through there and use the finance cost and investment income to work out whether there is any interest paid or is it the dividends received. Okay. Well, to do that, we need to go to is it the balance sheets uh, and have a look there to see whether or not there is any interest payable. So in the liabilities, that there doesn't seem to be any interest payable. And the current assets, there doesn't seem to be any dividend receivable balance. So what we can do there is within our operating activities, leave yourself plenty of space. So somewhere towards the bottom of the page, you can just go in there and write interest paid. So the interest payment is there is 400. Just for simplicity's sake, whilst we're there, I'll just get myself ready to deal with the tax payment in a moment. Well, there'll be some work. Uh, but then what you've got as well, don't forget, you've got, is it your investment activities? Uh, you have the, is it as well? Some dividend received. Okay. Uh, those dividends received are the as 180. Okay. Excellent. There we go. So we're not doing too badly, are we? We're getting there slowly but surely. Okay. Uh, I've looked up. I now look down uh, and have a look at my tax and profit for the year to work out tax paid and dividends paid. Okay, so you can see the 435 tax figure there. And then I have my tax payable balances within the statement of financial position. So opening of 2760, closing of 38 or 3020. So I will go into my tax T account. So within my workings. I'll draw up a T account, I will call it tax. 
And I have my opening liability at 2760 on the credit side. My closing at 3020 on the debit, ready to bring forward on the credit side. And then don't forget there, I've got my figure from the statement of profit or loss, which is 4350. Debit the expense, credit the liability. Okay. If I total that up and balance off the account, I've got 7110 on the right, 7110 on the left. And I put in a balancing figure. Uh, that balancing figure is it 4090. That's whereby I've credited bank, debited my tax payable, so I've paid my tax bill, and this year I've paid 4090. Okay, so that payment of 4090, can I find where it is? So it's on the first page of my answer. just below my interest paid, 4090, okay, excellent. So we've got the tax, I've dealt with the tax. Uh, the profit for the year is that the 10,650. I need the profit for the year to work out my dividend paid. So again, I can go into the workings there, draw up a T account, that T account is my retained earnings, I need my opening retained earnings on the credit side, closing on the debit, so remember both of those are going to come from the SFP. And then what we've got there is we need to put in the profit for the year figure. Profit for the year figure comes from the statement of profit or loss. And we know that is there at 10, 6, 5, 0. Okay. Uh, I need to find the balance sheet. Where are we? Close. There we go. So my retained earnings. Opening 6465. Closing. 16115. Okay. So brought forward. Is it 6465? Closing 16115. You don't have to do a T account. You can do it in another way if you want, but I'm just being thorough. Okay. So 6465 plus 10650 gives me 17115 on the right. So 17115 on the left, which works out quite nicely that you get a balancing figure of a thousand. And that's the dividend paid as you've credited the bank uh, and debited your retained earnings. So now I just need to find my dividend paid. Uh, so I'm going to put that within my financing activities. My dividend paid is there as 1,000. Okay. Excellent. There we go. Happy with where we are so far? If not, stop the video, go back, work it through, check that you are happy. Because now what we've done there is we've dealt with all of the bits and pieces from the statement of profit or loss. And then on my approach, we're doing quite well. Okay. I now need to look at the statement of financial position. Uh, and again, it's entirely up to you which ones you do first. You know, maybe do the borrowings first before the working capital. Uh, could look at the share capital and share premium. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but I'm going to start first of all with is it 
the working capital figures. So if I can find them, there we are. I've got inventory, which you can see there, there has been a decrease. Receivables, there has been an increase. And then in my payables, there has been an increase. Okay. So what have we got? Well, let's go into my operating activities. So PBT, finance costs, investment income. Uh, what have we got? We've got, was it? A decrease in inventory. Okay. Three, five, six. So is the current balance? It was... Nine six three five. Is that a decrease of six oh seven five? A decrease in inventory is a good thing because it means we've sold more inventory and therefore we've got the cash in quicker. So that's a cash inflow effectively. We then had was it an increase? In receivables, the receivables are currently 6,405. They were 4,542. Is that the increase of 1,863? Okay. If receivables have increased, it means we've not collected the cash in. So therefore, we have less cash. Uh, there is then finally an increase in our payables. Uh, the payables are now at 7562. They were at 436. Four. So seven five six two less four three six four. There's an increase in payables. Is it of three one nine eight? If the payables have gone up, you know, you've not spent that money, have you? You've kept it back by not paying your supplier. So therefore, that's an increase, a positive effect on the cash balance, isn't it? Okay. Excellent. Uh, so if I go back into my statement of financial position, uh, bits and pieces slowly begin to get ticked off. Uh, good figures, I think, to get now would be on the loan. If you look at the loan, there's been a reduction in the loan, hasn't there? So there's a repayment of your borrowings. So if I go there into my financing activities. In my financing activities. There's been a repayment of your borrowings. Uh, the borrowings are now at, boom, 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 I think the repayment comes to, is it 2,000, 300? Because what you've got there is that they are now 8,000. And they were 10,300. So there's a reduction, is it, there? 2,300. Uh, the other one that you've got as well is my ordinary share capital. Uh, you can see there there's been an increase in share capital. So based upon that increase in share capital, there must therefore be Some proceeds from the issue of shares. Uh, what are those proceeds? Well, the share capital is now currently at 19,365. Uh, the opening figure was 17,496. Uh, does that go through there and give me one eight 
six, nine. Okay, excellent. There we go. Uh, how are we getting on? Pretty well, I think. Uh, I've dealt with all my liabilities. I've dealt with all my equity. I've dealt with all my current assets. The only thing that is left is the challenging bit at the end, which is here, my assets and my, my non-current assets. So not just PPE, uh, given that we've got some dividends received in there, there must be some investments. Uh, but let's just look at the overall movement on non-current assets figure. Okay. Uh, so what have we got? We've got the opening and closing balances. So it's like an incomplete records question. Whereby we draw up a T account and we'll call it non current assets. Uh, the brought forward is on the debit side, so is that the at two six five seven four? The carry forward is at four three two eight two. Okay, uh, we need to work out what the balancing figure is. Okay, uh, are we given any clues? Uh, we're told the depreciation is four six five eight thousand. So first of all, let's get the easier marks there and go into our operating activities. Depreciation is a non-cash item, so we can add that back in. Is that at four six five eight? And then don't forget as well to update our T account. Four six five eight. Uh, debit depreciation expense, which we've made the adjustment for in the operating activities. Credit your your non current assets or your accumulated depreciation. Uh, what have we then got as other information? So I've dealt with part one. Part two, uh, assets with a carrying value of 1974. Uh, we're disposed of at a profit of 720. <sighs> a lot going on here. First of all, let's get the disposal uh, from our T account. So is that the 1974? We were also told as well that there was a profit. So if I go into my statement of cash flows, uh, you've got the, is it your profit on disposal? Being a non-cash item, uh, non-cash profits will get deducted. And uh, that was there, was it at 720? So it's increased profits. It's just an accounting adjustment to increase profits. Uh, the cash we can deal with in a moment. Okay, so we need to remove that profit figure. It is non-cash affecting. But we've dealt with the profit disposed of. We've dealt with the carrying value. We just need to be careful because in my investing activities, we have the purchase. Of, I'll say PPE, it, you know, in the question says non-current asset, doesn't it? Who cares? And then you've also got the sale of PPE. Uh, so what we've got there in terms of my PPE workings, uh, I can balance off the non-current assets T account. So if you total it up on the right, Four six five eight plus one nine seven four plus gives me the four nine nine one four four nine nine one four. Uh, if I put in my balancing figure, does that give me two three? 340. Uh, that's my payments, uh, credit, bank, debit, non-current asset additions. Okay. 
So there's a payment of 23340. And then we need to look at the sale of PPE. Okay. Uh, because what you've got there is if we go back and just look at it as a working, remember, your profit or loss equals your proceeds less the carrying value, doesn't it? And we were told the profit was there at 7.20. The carrying value we disposed of was 1974. What are the proceeds? Okay. So rearranging the formula, you should be able to do that. It's basic maths. If you add 1974 to both sides, uh, the 1974s cancel on the right, and then on the left, you're left with 197 plot. 4 plus 720, uh, does that go through there? Uh, 1974 plus 720 gives me, is it 2694? Okay, excellent. So I've got proceeds of 2694. I think I've dealt with everything. I can just balance everything up now and say a little prayer and it all works. Does that give me there in my investing activities negative 20466? Uh, in my financing activities, Is that one four three one? Uh, and then in my operating activities, quite a lot to cover. Fifteen thousand plus four hundred less one eighty plus six zero oh, seven five less one eight six three plus three one nine. Eight plus four six five eight less seven twenty less four hundred less four zero oh, nine zero oh, gives me two two zero oh, seven eight. Okay. If I then go through and take, is it two two zero oh, seven eight? Uh, deduct 20466. So that figure there. Oh, careful, gone too far. And then deduct 1431. That should go through there and give me 181. Phew. Which is all okay. Okay, so it's panic and nerves. Uh, in case you've got the numbers wrong. Okay, uh, well, there we go. Uh, and you sat there thinking, Chris, what were we doing? What was going on? Uh, well, what we were doing is using a statement of cash flows to go through there uh, and address that approach. You can take any cash flow question, doesn't matter how easy or how challenging it is. If you stick with that approach, you're not going to go too far wrong. So before you get carried away and do maybe some other questions that you've got or, or, or get further into the syllabus, practice one or two cash flow questions. And trust me, it'll, it'll oh, make you feel really good, make you feel really confident. OK, uh, so that's it from this chapter. Uh, that's it from this section on published financial statements. We then move into the next section, which is all about the accounting standards. Bring it on. I'll see you all soon.